And I'm here today, but I, really this work, I mean, of course all the partners at Clinic Think have been amazing and, and been so involved and invested with us, but also um, some of my colleagues and collaborators and co-investigators on these projects and others, uh, Girish Nakarni and Steve Ellis, Kirk Campbell and Jonathan Winston have been instrumental to all the data you, you, I'm going to show you today. And uh, we're really, it's a great team, and, and, and we hope to partner together for many years in the future doing clinical trials. Um, it's just a, a joke about the ICD-10 and all the clicks on the EMR. We now we have, we've, we've abandoned our terrible handwriting written in the charts, and we have the EMR, we're, we're clicking away, copying and pasting, et cetera. And um, so there's good and bad parts of it. Um, you know, we're, we're coding, but there's click fatigue, and, and, and still finding patients just based on those codes. Robert, you mentioned Crohn's disease, so you can find those 25 potential people with that code at your center. But really, then there's so many more stringent criteria applied by the trial on inclusion exclusion criteria, and we don't know if those 25 even have 10 or two or one, if you're lucky, that really are eligible for this specific trial. So, um, you know, this big data and digging for gold in these records has been, been the, the, the coveted uh, holy grail, but we're still trying to get our hands around it. And, and really, it's 2016. Can, can we leverage this? We have uh, all these great computer systems. Um, you know, when we do uh, trials, we have, you know, the funnels, and, and Emma had talked about funnels, and we have local funnels in our EMR, and you have structured um, demographic data, you have their age, race, date of birth, um, oh, that's age, uh, gender, etc. You have clinical data, blood tests, urine tests, you know, ICD-9, ICD-10 codes that come in, and you try to whittle down and, and interface with your EMR and get your eligible patients like that. But there's so much more rich data that are in, written in the charts, in progress notes, in the discharge summary, in nurses' notes, etc. Symptoms, signs, problems, radiology notes, etc. And those don't always come out as structured data. These are the key unstructured data that, that we, um, we, we document as healthcare providers. And really we should leverage it uh, because so much of it will apply to those inclusion and exclusion criteria that, that are, are there for the trial. Um, you know, many people are trying to leverage these kind of databases. I'm trying to use this mouse. Um, but there's, uh, again, as I mentioned, there's so. Oh, let me go back to the. There's so much robust data that can come off from the discharge summary, referral letters, the soap notes that the residents are writing, attendings, etc., and radiology and pathology reports. Sometimes you have to pick out a few key things. And, and if you're just looking for the typical structured data that would be housed in the central data warehouses or the EMR, you're going to miss that. So how do you get to that? And, and really, th this is the key of the ClinaThink software, is this natural language processing software that, that reads the charts, reads the notes, uh, you know, almost artificial intelligence, trying to piece together what's in those, those, those written daily notes that we've labored on daily, uh, taking care of, of, of patients, both in the inpatient, outpatient setting, and pulling that all together and, 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 and trying to distill it down. And so you know that finding these eligible patients, at least to, you know, on the human level, it, we only have, we have our, our eyeballs, which will go cross-eyed looking, we get fatigued mentally, you look through chart after chart, EMR after EMR, looking for those eligible patients. And, and in rare disease trials, this can become very frustrating and time-consuming for coordinators and investigators. So I, I mentioned leveraging that clinical data. There's, there's things that are written in the notes, like numbness or tingling in the limbs, difficulty walking, ophthalmology problems, um, history of, no indication of, which may be key, temporal associations, no relapse in the last six months. Are, is that being coded for, or is it gonna come out just in structured data? No, you need to look for that in the written notes. So Clicks and Rich, which is the tool behind uh, that, that ClinaThink is bringing forward, reads and interprets the narrative. It's your eyes, it's your brain, and, and, and it can identify patients matching the clinical criteria needed for that next clinical trial. So this clinical natural language processing 
uh, application transforms that unstructured clinical narrative into structured data that you can then query and do a very objective ranking, which I'll show you in the coming slides. So it extracts the, the narrative data, ingests those documents, processes that language used in the clinical documents, and I'll show you some examples of how it uses different search terms and even can handle um, errors in the way the, the word is written, uh, then generates a structured output, um, defines the data features that are needed, and, and then makes that data available for anal analysis and visualization. I'm going to show you from, sorry, from our example. So this, a, a few, this has just been a collaboration over the last uh, you know, few months, and it's been, again, such an enlightening and rich experience with, uh, between Clinithink and Mount Sinai. So we wanted to have two case examples. One was this retrospective trial. It was a phase two uh, study that uh, Kirk Campbell had, had been the lead site PI for at Mount Sinai. Um, in 2013 was the key enrollment year. It was a phase two multi-center double-blind parallel dosing randomized trial of frisolumab or placebo for patients with a very rare nephrology syndrome, steroid-resistant primary focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. And over those 12 months, um, Dr. Campbell and the coordinators found three eligible patients and two were ultimately enrolled. There was one screen failure. So he sees this as a positive. He, I think 0.6 patients was his break even. They were paying about 25,000 per patient enrolled. So it looked good. But how can, let's go back and apply Clinithink and see if that could have been improved and obviously bring, um, you know, bring more patients and, and of course make more money uh, for the site. Um, for this specific trial, this rare disease, there were seven inclusion and 22 exclusion criteria, and only seven of them could be identified from the standard structured data. There were other factors, you can see that there was unstable angina characterized by increasing frequent episodes with moderate exertion at rest, worsening severity, prolonged duration, or had an MI within three months prior to visit one. That's an example of unstructured that you needed to read the notes really to find out if they were eligible or not. Patient actively abuses ethanol or drugs, excluding tobacco. Again, is that really coded for properly? No, you're gonna to have to dig through. Sexually active man or woman with reproductive potential who is not willing to use two forms of birth control. Very, you know, it's, it becomes quite complicated, right? So, what was done was the, the, the MSDW is the Mount Sinai Data Warehouse, and they first started with a broad query, just using codes for focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, and urine protein greater than three grams. Uh, it's, it's the phenotype of the syndrome they wanted to see. They had to have this nephrotic range proteinuria. So through that, 512 distinct patients were identified, and there were 9,600 documents that, that went into uh, that search. So Clips and Rich processed those notes and created a tiered list of patients meeting those inclusion exclusion criteria and ranked them, 1A, 1B, 2A, and you'll see that on the next slide. Oh, in a couple of slides, actually. I just want to show you the complexity of finding patients with steroid-resistant FSGS. So it, it could take people labeled as steroid-resistant focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, or it could pair steroid resistance and focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, or people could have labeled it steroid-resistant nephrotic syndrome, which is true, it's a, just a broader uh, umbrella term, and of course, combining those two. And also, there was, people say steroids, but it's truly cortical steroids, so there's, 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 adi there's um, additional terms that were searched for. Um, refract resistant or refractory, those are obviously synonyms, so it looked for both of those terms. Or non-responsive, another synonym, right? And also, it looked for direct labeling of steroids, and prednisone is a typical one, and we used other equivalents as well, but they have to be on at least 40 milligrams per day. So it searched all those notes for patients who may have had any of those terms written in their, their clinical notes. And you can see at the bottom, steroid resistant, we often we make mistakes typing, but we took common spelling errors into account and also counted it. So even though if you're looking for an exact match that wouldn't match, that misspelling would, would count. And then it created this, these tiered rankings, 1A, 1B. Uh, these, pa these are highly eligible patients. You can see 1B has some exclusions, but a positive score, which means more uh, matching more criteria than not. Um, and down to 5A, where they, have, uh, they don't have FSGS, 
they had another nephrotic syndrome, for example. And uh, this, you can see, here's the final results. Um, from those 9,600 9, documents, they were processed in, uh, in half an hour, uh, really, relating to 512 patient uh, records. So I mentioned we initially had three eligible patients. Clicks and Rich found eight. They were in those 1A and 1B uh, strata. strata. Um, two were enrolled in real in uh, 2013. Five would have been projected to enroll. Not all eight because of that time frame. It had to be in that uh, time frame of 2013. So there were a few people that were seen, but then were outside the time window for where they, you could see 1B had some, uh, uh, there, there were some temporary exclusions for 1B, uh, and, and those became, un, uh, became positive and, and, and not a restriction anymore, but outside that time frame. This manual effort of 200 hours is just actually the coordinated time. It's an underestimate. I know Dr. Campbell and the other nephrologists in the clinic spent untold amount of time screening the charts as well, so many more hours. Um, we have 100 hours for clicks and rich, uh, to do um, just the time of setting this up and, and, and getting the, uh, the data warehouse data imported in, but uh, it, it was happened over a matter of uh, two weeks. So you can see that the exponential increases in uh, patients found and enrolled and the reduced effort in the last time. Dr. Uh, Matt Carney said this is a very rare disease, but despite that, in a fraction of the time, clicks in which found many more eligible patients than we did during that trial. It's just a, a graph of the blue line is, is what was happening. It took, uh, took all that time to find the two eligible patients. And you know, with, within a month, five, five could have been enrolled had clicks been uh, implemented in that time frame. The, we also wanted to verify the power of this tool prospectively. So this is an active ongoing trial sponsored by Bayer. Um, it's, it's a trial looking at now a much more common disease than steroid-resistant FSGS, which is so rare. Uh, it's, it's looking at uh, patients with diabetic nephropathy and looking at a new investigational agent. Um, so it's the Fidelio DKD trial, phenarinone in, in uh, diabetic kidney disease. This trial, um, as so many do, have a numerous inclusion and exclusion <coughs> criteria. Again, only seven could be identified from the structured data. There were things that, again, you needed more nuance and needed some kind of either human or mind or an NLP software to find it. The subjects with a clinical diagnosis of chronic heart failure with reduced ejection fraction and persistent symptoms, New York NYHA class two to four at the running visit. Um, or, or known non-diabetic renal disease including clinically relevant renal artery stenosis. So what's clinically relevant? And really you need to, to do that. Still need to verify after clicks runs, runs the, runs the uh, gamut on these, these uh, on the notes and, and the documents, but <coughs> could distill it way down. So again, we ran a broad query on the Mount Sinai data warehouse. Here we use an existing type two diabetes algorithm. So this is gonna be a huge funnel now um, and created that tiered list. So here we have 537,000 documents they were processed in 15 hours. You can see 35,000 plus documents per hour. This was 8,000, over 8,000 patient, individual patient records. Manually, this is obviously a bear. You need a team of people screening and all your providers actively looking. So in the three months prior to Clicks, the four months prior to Clicks and Rich, um, seven had been found, only one was enrolled. An estimate of 50 hours um, had been spent in doing that in, in four months. Um, this is labeled preliminary in the back because it's still ongoing and we're still finding uh, new patients and, 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 and using it in real time to enroll. Um, there's 97 eligible found right now. There's, there's even more that we have not even had time to screen in, that, in the lower tiers that, that may be eligible. Um, 13 are, are going to be enrolled now in this next um, a couple of weeks, it's actually just become an issue of, of man and woman power, of, of getting these patients in, scheduling the, the screening visits, etc. Um, but you can see a, a, a huge increase in the number eligible and enrolled um, for, for uh, this time. I guess, yeah. 
looks like it went up, but it was mostly uh, it was mostly document feeding and, and, and screening uh, post facto. So there is more time at, at, at this time, but you're getting so much more enrollment, um, and, and it's really in, in a two week time frame rather than, than four months. So Dr. Winston's the site PI. Using your solution, we have done in one week what have taken four months. This is a game changer. Um, graphical representation of, of the explosion in enrollment. Um, here I just have some extra slides, which are just the uh, inclusion exclusion criteria, just in case anybody was curious. But the, the, the ones in red were the, the ones that we can find by structured data, like that were based on age or Number four is the GFR, which is the kidney function, so that's easy to get from an EMR. Um, but there's others um, that were very difficult. In the opinion of the best data, the patient has steroid-resistant FSGS, must have been treated with a course of high-dose steroid for a minimum of four weeks in duration and found to be intolerant of steroids. So it's, it's a very complicated thing that, that you needed to search. Um, like number 12 is that unstable angina criteria I mentioned earlier. Um, it, this, this shouldn't have been labeled number one, but uh, again, another condition, morbid obesity, drug use that's caught, made, predisposed them or lead to FSGS. Again, you can only get this in the assessment and plan of provider notes. Um, so the list goes on and on. Diabetes trials, same thing. The red ones are the ones you can find standard, but the uh, non-red ones are the ones that you really need to, to sort out and, and dig through. So. So uh, that concludes the talk. I'll take questions, but you can see this tool, very powerful at uh, really cutting down time and, and finding those eligible patients for your clinical trials. Thank you.